Two Sentence Horror Stories is a psychological horror anthology show that uses psychological horror to try to understand the world around us and the issues that we're all currently facing. It's kind of a safe, almost Trojan horse kind of way for people to kind of examine themselves and examine issues that might be uncomfortable. Which I really, really like. It's like its own little mini story. Have you ever seen one of these? Each episode of Two Sentence Horror Stories starts with a sentence. And you won't understand the true context of that first sentence until you've completed the episode. Why is the bank moving? And you finally receive that second part of the horror story. Between those two sentences, there's an entire universe that has the potential to exist here. Season two of Two Sentence Horror Stories definitely continues the tradition set in season one of the show where each episode is going to deliver a lot of scares, great characters, complex stories, really thought-provoking ideas, and hopefully a lot of disturbing imagery. <laughs> Vera created a fantastic show that has an enormous amount of legs to go in many different directions, and it has a drive and it has a purpose. I love Vera's vision for the show of socially relevant horror that really is character based. It's been all treasures the whole way. That's what makes it so valuable. It's a really important ideology difference to look at. You know, one of the things I'm most compelled by when thinking about this series is the way in which it's grounded in reality. Let's roll sound, please. Rolling! Action! Every episode is a whole different subgenre of horror. Some of the new subgenres in season two, we've got an outbreak episode. We should get him to a hospital. Listen to me. We need to keep this under control. It's um, ironic. <laughs> For the first time are going into almost an old-timey Western context, which is brand new for us and really, really fun. The subgenre of horror that most influenced me was body horror. I wanted to talk about the ways that patriarchal standards of beauty keep women oppressed and separate from each other. Perfect. There is an episode which is sort of a combination of creature and slasher in a high school. Do you want to see a head in a bag? Well, I'll give you a head in a bag. It is everything that you might have grown to love about two sentence horror stories sort of ratcheted up to the next level. Pretty much we are exploring grief, attachments, day of the dead. The other Los Muertos is for everyone and it's not made up. Each episode explores a different theme and the number of possibilities is just endless. It's not necessarily horror for horror's sake. It's using the horror language to help inform the audience of like what's going on. And to me, that's the best kind of horror. The horror that doesn't rely on just like jump scares. It's also sort of the struggles that we have internally that really make us afraid. <laughs> It plays with all the tropes and themes of the horror genre, and then it just flips it on its head. I think what makes Two Sentence Horror Stories unique is how much it tackles diversity and social issues. Are you using again? That's what this is really about. You're checking in on me. Horror as a genre, I think, has always been socially relevant, but the lens or the mirror has been really limited into who is telling those stories and whose fears are being represented and for what gaze. Well, you're welcome to go to another hospital, one where you'll feel more comfortable. Not only are we talking about racial injustices or gender injustices. Elsa, is everything okay? It's Elliot, remember? It's time for trans people to tell stories about trans history and trans lives. When these stories are authored by and controlled by those who are most impacted by the storytelling, we enter into a world of new creative possibility. And I think that's so cool. Oh dear, this is the men's room. I'm a boy. Not only that, we have a real life cast member who, who is living that in his own life and a real director that lived that in his own life and to see that all come out, it's really emotional. I'm done with everyone trying to twist me into something I'm not! Sometimes the pressure to assimilate and succeed can lead to a form of 
self-loathing, but also internal racism. Between two Asians, we couldn't get the math right. Yeah, it was touch and go that till I broke out the abacus, huh? And it's all <laughs> wrapped up in this story about a murderous doppelganger. Who's there? The doppelganger is a manifestation of the toll it has taken on him and what it has cost him to experience microaggressions and racism his whole life in pursuit of success. They don't see you as Asian. They know you're one of us. We can talk about racism, but let's take it a step further and talk about colorism. Sometimes people that are closer to whiteness are sometimes given more access. You could help me do something about all this if you joined management. It's really <laughs> addressing the issue that's hidden within the film industry. This isn't an Indian story. It's a white story where they make up what Indians do and say in it. There's so much more to indigenous people than just bow and arrow and some feathers. Can I ask you some questions for my character? I'm Chad. No way. I hope that this also just brings about organic representation in all roles. A show like Two Cents Horror Stories is a really difficult one to write because it's an anthology and the margin for error is small. I was just so lucky. How's that novel going? I'm working on it. Not only were a lot of the voices women, which is fantastic, but we were women from so many areas of life and so many communities and cultures. To be in a room with four women and then we had other women who came in was just a godsend. I can't believe we finally have one of us as shift manager. It's amazing to be writing so many episodes in such a short period of time. I feel like forging my craft through the fire. You really put your soul into this. It just made me feel really safe and free to share things that I maybe normally wouldn't. Whenever someone sees you and gives you that first opportunity, it's just double, double special. When you are defined by somebody else's narrative, they're often either washed down or they're propaganda against you. And if you don't have a say in what your representation is out in the world, then you don't really exist. <laughs> Writing team at Two Sentence Horror Stories is vital to the show, but also to what Vera Miao really wanted to create, which was getting more diverse voices and diverse people in this industry. The diversity of stories is both within the genre as well as embracing this really culturally diverse age that we live in. And you can feel it from the writing room all the way through to the casting. That's what makes the show perhaps a little bit unique. From the directors that they choose and the subject matters, the themes, Two Cents Horror Stories has a strong opinion and a strong desire to really put other demographics and diversity into the forefront of a genre that they've been typically pushed out of. This is the first time that, honestly, that I had an opportunity to have a lead role opposite another actress of color. It was really, really great and refreshing to finally see that there are actually people who care to see things and represent everything on television the way we have it in real life. And we also get to see some characters go through a very mysterious and challenging journey without being solely defined by their ethnicity. But it's not only just about Latinx people, but more so that it's, it's about people. You're gonna need all the protection you can get. They really, really try to cast members of different groups to make sure that it's not just all straight, white, blonde boys. Nothing about this is fair. We wanted it to be really true to what was required within each of those episodes. We were used to sort of seeing white characters. All of those different backgrounds were all funneled through that white lens. You ever felt the pain you didn't think you'd survive? And so the idea of telling horror stories where people's different backgrounds cause perhaps a story to twist in different directions, I thought was really interesting. Charles! This is a dope thing to be out there because it's not really common in what we watch on television. I really like that on two sentence horror stories, I can see characters who look like me. This is me. And aren't always the first ones to die. I'm really excited to see what the ripple effect of that is for other projects. Creating a horror show in the middle of a pandemic, it's nice to be able to take all of that anxiety that you have inside and put it somewhere that isn't real life. Is everything okay? Actually, no. During a pandemic, they get your masks all the time and I put hand sanitizer on. It's really safe. The methodology around the anthology aspect of this was really challenging. Every week, we have to create an entirely new world. 
with new characters, new spaces, new stories. Nothing carries over from week to week. We we're incredibly grateful to the crew members that we had working in our departments and in all departments, to be honest. For every week that we were working, we had an episode in prep and an episode in production and often multiple episodes at varying stages of post-production. So you're saying it's magic? We did feel like in previous seasons of the show we were able to achieve a sort of tone and aesthetic that we felt worked for the narratives that were being told. This season our goal was to really refine that. You know, the visual language of a psychological thriller is different than uh, fantasy horror, which is different than zombie stuff. All of those little subgenres have their own inherent visual language. We tried to ensure that they felt like planets within the same universe. And evoke a different feel, depending on where the camera is, depending on what the lens is, and the lighting and the composition. So when you're looking at these shots in the show just know like nothing is arbitrary. We thought about every single thing. And cut! I would want viewers to be entertained and hopefully creeped out. Don't judge a book by its cover. Cherishing time with loved ones while you have them. Because you never know what somebody's going through. The lack of equality and equity. We really hope that they take away the experience, what we as trans people have to go through. Any time where a woman either feels uncomfortable or feels unsafe in the presence of a man, your gut is telling you something's not right, listen to your gut. The struggles that small businesses encounter in a situation like the pandemic, embrace your uniqueness and your story. I think I'd want viewers to take a look at their own lives and see what kind of choices they're making. Our own humanity is what, what can save us we can find some light, even in the darkest moments. You should always reflect on how you are impacting someone's life because you always are, because someone's always watching you. Those who have passed on is that they're not gone. They're still with us and we can communicate with them that at any point in time, all we have to do is listen. I'm just so excited for season three and what's to come. This season, we also offer some light in the darkness. We offer some triumph. Even if you come out at the end of it, our heroes come out a little scarred and a little bit changed. You know, in real life, the fear and the anxiety is so large that maybe two sentence horror stories can let you process some of that fear through fantasy and through story and also see some hope. Let's wrap on this incredible crew. <laughs>